How's it going lads? Marshall here and welcome back to another review on the channel. This is a different type of card that nobody's seen yet this FIFA. It's a UCL moments and it is Costas Manolas. Manolas of course got that moment against Barcelona where he did score in the last minute. The crowd went wild, he went wild and this is the card for that exact moment. So his shooting, it's went up quite a bit but these other categories, his defending, his physical, his pace etc have went up slightly as well. So we're going to review the day and see what he brings to the table. I don't normally do defender reviews, but if you do enjoy this and you want to see more, you know what to do. Smash that like and bring the bloody hype. Let's try and hit 2,000 or 1,000 likes on this video. That would be insane. And um, yeah, if you're new to the channel or anyway, you found the channel or anything like that, uh, subscribe. Subscribe takes two seconds of your time and click that little bell as well. So Costas Manolas, of course, will be playing as a centre back in this formation. His work rates are low attack and high defensive, so he might sit a little deeper. Than, um, than the medium high of uh, Laurent Blanc. So he could uh, kind of disbalance the back line or something like that. So that's what I wanted to see with this card. Will the work rates affect him? Lads, let's find out. Let's hop in the review. So here we go then, lads. And the first thing you will notice about this card is he's quite expensive. For an 88 rated card, he's 240k on the Xbox and on the PlayStation. Of course, this card can only be obtained via the SBC, which you've got to do three of them. And uh, one of them rewards a 50k pack. So the pack's bad actually are quite decent. However, the card comes with two-star skills. It doesn't really matter for a centre-back. Two-star weak foot as well. Could potentially be an issue for a centre-back depending on uh, his... Um, well, depending on which direction he goes. Does he play on the left or does he play on the right of your defence? I prefer right footers on the right side, left footers on the left side, but that's just me, lads. That's just me. He's got a lot of high work rates, like I've already said. He's six foot two tall, and lads, his card stats are no joke, and his in-game stats are no joke either. From the 90 jumping, 99 when I can himself, of course, he's got 86 strength, 90 aggression, 89 inceptions, he's got an 82 head accuracy, 89 marking, 90 stand tackle, 92 slide tackle as well, reactions 91, composure of 85, the pace in general is phenomenal, 82 acceleration, 88 sprint speed, sensational starts right there. Now in terms of the dribble on category, you've got 73 agility, 63 balance, the balance is an issue with the card, and sometimes he can feel very clumsy, and I do believe it's because of the balance and the agility uh, upon the card, but again, the balance, you look at like Virgil van Dijk or someone like that, probably got worse balance than this card. In terms of the ball control though, it's only 70, and his dribbling is 58, his first touch is horrendous on this game, hence why it will be a corner. Now in this review, you'll see a lot of tackles, a lot of headers, and a lot of interceptions with the card, because he is very physical on this game, and he's got a great aggression about him. This one actually leads to a goal, it's actually a good goal as well. Actually no, the next one could potentially lead to goal. The next one after the next. Lads, I'm getting confused. But anyways, guys, what I'm trying to say is that he's very aggressive in the challenge and he comes out with the ball nearly all the time. Look at that one. He's going in for that challenge. He misses the slide tackle and the shot is deflected wide for a corner. However, he normally is on the money all the time. That header there, he won it. Unfortunately, I didn't get any players around the like, around him to get the ball back. It's can't see it. We'll spread it out wide and the cross will come in. Guess who's there again? Nova, then Costas Manolas. His heading and his positioning defensively is phenomenal on this game. This is the one that leads to a goal and actually it's actually a decent goal as well. That's why I've included it in this uh, in this gameplay just to kind of show you what he can actually do. What a goal that is by George Best. I can't wait to get his prime, 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 prime icon or whatever the hell they'll call that. In terms of the pros of this card then lads it's the Hedden. Hedden is number uno. Honestly he wins headers all the time. He's a monster in the air. He's six foot two. He's got 90 jumping. When Anka Kempstall goes to 99, this guy wins nearly everything in the air. When it comes to pace you've seen it there. You can catch up players very very, very quickly on this game. So in terms of the pace, it is 82 acceleration, 88 sprint speed. Acceleration on point, the sprint speed, it goes up to 93 with Yanka Kem style and you can definitely notice that in game. Um, yeah, the interceptions, he's always in the right place at the right time to intercept the ball, his defensive positioning is on points and he does a great job at doing that. The ball goes down the right hand side this time and Manolas, look at that challenge, look at that block, look at the, I don't know, the aggression in that. He just jumps in for it and he wins the ball back on that occasion. And the shot does go wide from uh, the effort from my opponent. So in terms of the best stats, you got the jump and the stand tackle and the ex uh, well the aggression of the card. I was going to say acceleration. Uh, acceleration isn't that great, but again, with a midfielder on this game, you'd say it's sensational. With a striker on the game, you'd say it's decent as well. And with a defender on this game, it is very, very good. Uh, um... Sometimes it can be very clumsy. Sometimes it can be very clumsy, and I'll get into that right about now. Look at that clearance off the line. That's fantastic. But sometimes 
He's a little too aggressive. His aggression is sensational. Gets him into fighting for challenges and that. And it makes him come out with the ball in 50-50 situations. However, sometimes, just sometimes, he's a little too tenacious. Not sure why he's not in the box there for the corner. I'll come to that in another kind of video. But the defensive positioning on this game just isn't great from corner kicks for centre-backs. And just look at that. He went in with the wrong foot. Sometimes, a little too tenacious in the charge. I do love the aggression on um, outside the area. But inside the area, you need to be a little bit more tentative. And a little bit more careful with what you do. And sometimes the pros have got the head and the interceptions, the pace, the tackling is sensational as well. 90 stand tackle, 92 stand slide tackle, and with Anker, it goes to 99 99. Sensational stats. And the aggression as well. This is controlled aggression, lads. Let's say controlled aggression. You can use it outside the area, and uh, you can come out with the ball in every single time. His strength is decent as well. 86 strength upon the card. Um, in terms of the content, lads, we've got the first touch. The first touch is very, very bad with this card. And you can kind of feel that if the ball gets kind of fizzed across the area, and um, this guy, Manolas, is there to intercept the ball. It just bounces off him and goes bloody anyway. I don't like that in the slightest. I don't want my centre-backs to do, be doing that because it could lead to future goals in terms of the, the game in general. He's very clumsy on this game, whether it be on the dribble, coming out of defence, sometimes you need to take on opponents every now and then, or the first touch. He's very, very clumsy. He can be clumsy in the challenge, and it could be because of the over-aggressive kind of nature to this card. Uh, passing accuracy. It's not there. It's not there. His passing is tremendously shite. He's got 67 short pass and 68 long pass and vision of 24. So, <laughs> in terms of passing the ball, he's got 20... Uh, what is it? 20, 20 vision is the perfect one. He's got like 20... Uh, Five, well, I don't know, 30 10 vision or 35 5 vision. It's, it's just, it's terrible, lads. It is terrible on this game. It's his uh, 2020 vision and he's just vision in general. He's passing in general. It's just really, really bad. So, all that aside, lads, he's, um, he's got his pros, he's got his cons. You weigh them up together and I've come out with the rating of an 8.8. Is he better than David Luiz? No, he's not. Is he better than Virgil van Dijk? No, he's not. Better than Varane to Di Ramos? No, no, no. Um, unfortunately, not, lads. I was having big expectations of this card because it's the first of the kind of UCL moments and I was looking forward to the card. Unfortunately, it didn't live up to those expectations. It does have great links to this card. The likes of Florenzi, the likes of um, Juan Jesus, the, the centre-back in the foot swap, and uh, Clive and the other Roma players. So it's got good links. It's just... Um, he isn't as great as I thought he would be on this game. I don't rate him as the best centre-back in the Serie A. I rate him as one of the best centre-backs in the Serie A, but not the best, which I was expecting with the card. So all in all, 8.8. It's a good rating for a centre-back on this game from uh, my ratings. But um, yeah, you've seen David Luiz's rating. It's, it could be a hell of a lot better with cards on this game. Sometimes he's just... He's, he's too... Um, I don't know, man. Clumsy on this game. He's, he's a very clumsy centre-back. Sometimes that's the ball go around him. Sometimes the ball goes through him. Even though he's got great challenge on, he's just that little too aggressive in the challenge from time to time. Again, controlled aggression is what you need to use. In terms of value for coins, I'm going to give it a 7.4. The, the card itself is overpriced. 240k, I reckon that's overpriced for the card. However... In terms of uh, the packs that you do get back, a 50k pack and two other packs, that's actually not too bad. So 7.4 kind of props that up due to the packs that he does get. Enjoyment rate 8.4 because, again, it's hard to get enjoyment out of centre-backs, but if they mop up everything, they clear everything, and they're afraid of corners, stuff like that, then he'd have an enjoyment rating. He really, really would. That uh, uh, that's just makes sense. It, it does make sense because you've seen in David Luiz's one. I, I, he was a corner friend. I was having fun with him. He was doing great passes. He was coming out with defence. He was dribbling with sometimes. He was strong in the challenge. He was coming out with the ball. His jumping was amazing. His head and accuracy was nuts. Man, alas, he's just not at that level. He's really not at that level. In terms of foot champs ready, he's getting a 9 out of 10. Not 10 out of 10 because, again, um, there's loads of better centre-backs on this game. Even like normal Rafa Varane and uh, Sergio Ramos are rate higher than this card on this game. So in terms of links with the card, the perfect link, there's no Greeks at Roma to give him a perfect link, unfortunately. So there is no links in that kind of sense in terms of a perfect one. In terms of strong links, you've got the Roma players from Cliver to Juan Jesus. I always forget his first name. I always want to say Gabriel Jesus, but it's Juan Jesus, the foot swap player. I think he's in foot swap now for like six tokens. Um, Florenzi, probably your best bet right there. Florenzi is your best bet. Link him up to the right back and then and, uh, get two weak links into him, uh, and you're good to go. In terms of the weak links that you could have, Koulibaly has won anyone in the Serie A, could give him a weak link, of course. And uh, Socrates uh, from Arsenal, the, the Greek fellow Greekman, or Greek national, or 
Um, what, what do you call it? Like Grecian? Gre I don't know, man. Greek player. Um, fellow Greek. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that. Fellow Greek. You could link him up right there. In terms of similar players, we have Eric Bailey or Bailey. I always say Bailey because it's the name of my dog. I always get confused. Uh, Kimpembe and Boateng as well. All quite similar to this card. They're great in the air. They're great in the challenge. But sometimes... I don't know, man. The passing just lets them down, and uh, the dribbling and stuff. It's just the, the very clumsy setbacks backs from time to time. In terms of K Pro, will be the heading. This guy is dominant in the air, and he wins nearly every single header he goes for. In terms of K Con, will be the first touch. It's again a very clumsy kind of a tribute to have, a trait to have. A first touch is a very clumsy thing. Best camp style will be anchor. It takes him to a 94 center back. Does he represent that 94 rating? Hell no! No, he does not. In terms of the best uh, within that position, within that league, you got to look at Chiellini. I reckon Chiellini is better than Manolas on this game. you got to look at the work rates as well. Lot of high on Manolas. Sometimes he can be lagging behind the defence. Of course, that can lead to issues. It could lead to like a Z line in your defence and like a zigzag, so to speak. One through ball, a set of strikers clean through, and it did against me. I had a lot of high scoring matches, lads. A lot of high scoring matches. So Manolas comes in at number two, just ahead of Koulibaly, who's got high to high work rates. And Skriniar comes in at number four. Of course, the upgraded Skriniar. That could be the, the headliner or the SBC version. So Skriniar comes in there. I think he's got medium high work rates. And one his Zeus comes in at number five for the Serie A. In terms of Greek national within that position, Manolas obviously leads the way. Socrates comes in at number two. And lads, that's where I'm going to end the review. I hope you have enjoyed today's review. If you have, once again, bring that hype. Smash the hell out of that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And as always, I will catch you all next time.